Welcome back to our 2024 Craft Along series and the last part of our Magic Shop build. When we last left off, we had done some finishing on the base and we finished the front part of the shop. So today we're going to do some more finishing touches um, and connect the front to the back. You can see I've changed some of my labels and the shop name. We're going to add the clear plastic to all of the front window areas. So the easiest way to do this that I figured was to just lay your plastic down and I tried from the middle going to the outside and it's probably easier going from the outside to the middle and then just use a sharpie and mark off just a general idea or as close as you can to where you want the plastic to be and then we'll cut it to fit afterwards. I hope you all have been enjoying this. I found it a very fun project and I think for the beginners I managed to keep it um, pretty simple but yet add something more that you haven't seen done to this same project elsewhere. So now I'm just dry fitting the uh, plastic for the round window. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now I'm going to pull the um, plastic or the protective covering off of both sides of that sheet of plastic. If you wanted kind of a foggy window, you could leave that plastic on. It's just would be a personal preference thing. So I'm going to use score tape on both the left and right sides of the plastic as a fast quick grab and then also add some glue in for a permanent hold. Score tape or double sided tape works really good for this instant as a quick way to, for a piece to grab hold and stay where you put it but it's not really good for long term. It does dry out and the uh, glue in it will let let go at some point. <clears throat> so you always want to use it with regular glue or P PVA glue or something else that will hold permanently. Now you see me adding the glue. And you don't need a lot of glue, just a little bit. I get this plastic from Amazon and it's listed in the supply list on my website if you're looking for any. I also went in and added some glue as you can see to the little bars, crossbars on the inside. And do this sparingly, don't add a whole bunch. I can hear my wind chimes outside my window in my office. I wonder if it's going to come through on the video. <laughs> if so, oh well, sorry. <laughs> Just gives you something else to listen to besides me. Now, anytime that you use um, double-sided tape, you always want to um, use some kind of a tool to press it down really well and that's what you see me doing now. It's just the end of my tweezers and I'm just pressing it so that it's got a good firm hold and you can tell when you do this the color will change. Um, kind of like putting tape on glass when you rub it you can see if it's stuck all the way down or not. So there's the first window. <clears throat> A 
lost my piece of acrylic there or plastic now when you go to put this one on you want to make sure that you don't cover up that hole you'll see that I've covered it here but I will go back and trim it in a few minutes and make it lower so because we have a light that goes through that hole so you don't want to cover it up and you don't want to have to punch a hole in it again once you get that plastic on there because it could crack on you one of the good things about this plastic is you can cut it with scissors now here's where I'm going to go trim it down so it'll be below that hole And once again, I'm removing the protective cover. <coughs> Pardon me. I've got a lot of wind kicked up here today, and it's really wreaking havoc on my allergies. I think we're supposed to get some snow, but we'll see. You never know. I think sometimes weather people just, no offense weather people, but I think sometimes it seems like you just throw a dart and, just go, oh well, I think we're going to have rain today, or we're going to have snow today, and then change your mind later. <laughs> and this glue that I'm using will dry clear. Just pushing the acrylic down or the plastic down. Next we'll do the um, window for the door. And on the, the smaller shop window I wound up using three pieces uh, you could use one big piece and then just kind of score it with your craft knife and bend it But it just seemed easier to me to just do it in three separate pieces So I did the left and right side and then the center drink of water here. Oh, that was my water bottle. It's going to explode. Always test fit your plastic before you just go slapping it down on there because you never know. Save yourself a little bit of headache. Sorry for my sniffles.
gosh, some strong winds going on out there. So there we go. Now we've got the front door done. And I'm doing a little bit of cleanup here, just a bit. On shops like this, a lot of times I don't really worry about if I get glue on the um, plastic where you should be able to see through it because most of these shops don't have clean windows. They're always a bit foggy or dirty, um, probably because of the location. We have cobblestone streets there and you've got um, grit. Here you can see me, I'm going to put a little bit of glue on my finger and just place it randomly on the back of the plastic to kind of add a little fogginess to the window. You can also do this with your um, spray sealer, your matte spray sealer. You can take a piece of paper and just tear it at random parts and then lay it on top and spray around the edges of it. Just with a light spray. And I went kind of heavy on this part, on the front door. And once it dries, it's just going to leave kind of a foggy look. see here now that will dry clear but it will like I said leave a foggy look and I'm going to do a little bit here on this window as well And I'm just using a very light touch here. Here I am measuring for the left and right side. <clears throat> and I did take the plastic pretty much from the all the way from the bottom to the very top in that area. And now I have the window in on that side. And I do come back and 
use the glue on it like I did the other two to um, kind of distress it. So once that's dry, the next thing you want to do is put your hinges on your um, front and back. These hinges, oh my goodness, these hinges. <laughs> I never want to do these hinges again. I don't know, I tried two different kinds of glue and nothing was really drying really well. So I wound up going back to my tacky glue and it's kind of awkward to put them on there and get them in the right spot. I did finally manage the tacky glue did finally take hold. <clears throat> As you can see here in the, these hinges, oh my, or the screws, these teeny tiny little screws. I thought I would never get these screws in there. I finally took this pointed tool and started like pilot holes for each of the screws and even then it was difficult still but I did finally manage to get them in there so it will take a little bit of doing to get these in uh, that's the best way I can tell you is to do that pilot hole um, otherwise you'll never get it every time you try to screw it in there it just would fly off I think I lost about six screws somewhere in my office floor so once I had the screws on there I taped the front and back to hold it to let it dry so that nothing would move and I did add a little bit of glue um, in those pilot holes because I figured at some point those screws might start wiggling their way out so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add a little bit of uh, grime to the base and to the very bottom there I'm showing you where I've got the hinges put in finally that was a test believe me <clears throat> um, you can see I went in and in those areas underneath and added some more distressing with the white paint To do this, we're going to use the Distress Texture Paste and then some acrylic paint, which will mix into the paste. I've got a couple of little rocks I picked up from outside and just a cheap paintbrush. Um, I tried using this paintbrush. It didn't work so well for application. So you can see off to the left, I've got a uh, craft knife or palette knife, and that worked a whole lot better. You don't need a whole bunch of this. As you can see, it was a very small little scoop I made out of that jar. <clears throat> and I'm going to mix some green paint in there. This is the same, uh, our gray. It's actually a medium to dark gray. And it doesn't take a whole lot of paint. I'm just putting some on my paintbrush and that I'm going to mix it in and this texture paste is a little bit different from the grit paste that I normally use the grit actually has a lot of grit in it this texture paste has a little bit of grit but not as much so once I got it mixed up I decided it really wasn't enough and I grabbed some uh, mix that I have this is uh, coarse black pepper and coarse salt mixed together And I'm just going to add a little bit of that in with the uh, mixture here to get it to the texture that I want. And I want a pretty gritty texture here. So you'll see me go back and add some more of that salt and pepper mixture. You could also use sand, colored sand, or um, any kind of sand. But I was trying to keep the gray, kind of gray speckled. Also have brown uh, craft sand that I use frequently on projects and a little of it goes a long way and this is kind of where I figured out that this paintbrush was not going to be a good way to apply this
it just goes too flat trying to use the paintbrush. So I'm just going to pick out some random areas up near the structure and then branch out from the structure um, just to add some light grime and some dirt like would have blown off the street up onto the sidewalk and next to the building. Now I've switched to my craft knife which works a lot better and you just kind of pat it on there and spread it around. And I didn't go crazy with it, I just added some here and there. This is also a good way, um, if you wanted to, you could take this and cover the entire base in it and then wipe it off of the raised cobblestones and it gives you a, a gritty grout kind of between those stones. However, the images on this was so good, were so good that I decided just to leave it and just do it sporadically like this. So that it really represents more of dirt blown up next to the building than the other in here. I'll show you a close up of this. You can see there where I've added it just in certain spots. Once this is dried, you can go back and add a little bit of acrylic paint and some different colors if you want. I'm going to attach these rocks now. These were just little rocks that I picked up out of our flower bed. glue's running low. It's getting hard to squeeze it out of the bottle. So once I did this, I decided the bottom of the structure looked too clean and too neat. So I came back in and I've got like a gray and you'll see me add some black into it because it just wasn't dark enough. And I'm just going to go up on the very bottom parts of the, um, the building, the structure, and the, um, the texture that we just put on. That gray was that same medium gray that I used before. <clears throat> and I'm just kind of painting this on. And then I wind up mixing some gray or black with the gray. Sometimes it just takes a little bit of fussing to get the exact color that you want. And I'm just brushing it on, going from the bottom upwards, really, very lightly. And at one point you'll see me come in and take my thumb and just kind of uh, brush that upward, just to tone it down just a little bit so it doesn't look so splotchy. right there by the door and then it, I will bring it around the gold and the little bars kind of around the back of the steps
and if you wind up getting too much paint at the start you could add just a little drop of water and kind of water your acrylic down a little bit Just kind of keep playing with it until you get a look that you're happy with. Whenever you're doing something like this, always remember it's just paint. You can always repaint it. So nothing's permanent until you decide that it's permanent. Just kind of going around the bottom of the step now just to add a little shadow, a little darker area. And just doing a few touch-ups here and there. Kind of darkening up that um, grit that we added. Once this is all finished, you will need to spray it with your spray sealer. And you can <clears throat> just take a piece of uh, printer paper and cover up your windows when you do spray the spray sealer so you don't get your windows unless you just particularly want to. Okay, so, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> we finished our um, magic shop. I did not film putting all the little pieces in there, but you've been able to see it. I've shown images at the end of the video. I'll get close-ups of this. So now we're going to do our lighting, and I mentioned before that I didn't want to use the lighting that came with the kit. I've heard mixed reviews. Some of them say that it lasts a long time. Others say it lasts a very short time. So I decided to go back with my um, normal way of doing lighting for miniatures. Plus I needed more lights because of the top structure. So what I've used is called room lighting. It's from Evan Designs. And it comes with five uh, warm white LEDs, a battery strap, a switch, and shrink tube and this is what it looks like in the package so you have your five lights this hooks onto your this is for a nine volt battery so this hooks to your nine volt battery the little pieces of rubber are your shrink tubes and then you have your lights and there's a switch to turn it on and off with so um, I think these run like $9.99 now I got the 8 inch wire they do have a 14 inch wire and I kind of wish I had done that. Um, it's up to you whether you want to spend, it's a few dollars more for the 14 inch wires. But um, I just wasn't thinking when I ordered mine. So if you want to just, or for some reason, if you buy the eight inch, uh, you really don't need the four 
14 inch except for the front light. So I have this wire, which I also got from Evan's design. It's black and red. And um, I'm going to have to hook some of this wire to the front light so that it can reach all the way to the back. Um, so besides that light kit, you'll need a 9 volt battery. And the battery control, you simply clip it onto your 9 volt battery and then this wires to your, all of your wires, all of your red wires connect to this, all of your black connect to this, and then you have a switch here that turns off and on. And I'm going to store the battery in the back. I'm going to make a little container to put it in to kind of hide it. And um, I'll get to that in the, when we do the second um, craft along for the structure that goes on top. Now, if you're not doing the structure on top, you can get away with just the three lights and you can go ahead and connect it, your wires now. I'm not going to do that because I am doing the top structure. But to prepare the box, what I've done is I've drilled two holes right here, one here, one here, and they're fairly good size holes because these have resistors and other they are kind of thick down here. So you wanna be able to pull this up through the hole so that just the top of the light rests on the inside. So once you get your holes drilled, you simply want to feed your wires from the inside up through to the outside. And once you get it up there, pull it up as far as you can, and then you're going to bend it down, bring it to the wires to the back, and then we're gonna just tape it right there. Just temporarily, just to keep it out of your way. And those will stay there until we do the second part. You wanna make sure this is mashed down pretty good uh, because our second part will sit up on top of here and cover these wires so you won't see them. For the front, we want to feed it from the outside. Same thing for, from the outside to the inside, and it's just through that little hole. Whoops, wires are all crooked because I've been messing with them. There we go. Feed both wires from the front to the inside, and then you want to push that up as tight as you can against so now you can see it's it's pretty well flat here and when I temporarily hook these up this light is really bright and it's kind of in your face so I wanted to find a way for right now we'll just leave this wire hanging here um, I did bend it up once I got it set I bend it up here and what we're going to do is run the wire from there down here and then it will go out to the back um, over the top here so you can go ahead and just put this and put a little piece of tape there to hold that for right now and then we'll find a way to cover that later but that will hold it for now and um, I'm gonna just bend that to the way the back too. So, I didn't like the way this was in your face. So I decided to come up with something to cover it. And I had these, don't laugh, but <laughs> I had these uh, press on nails that I used in a vid another video I made. They have little moons and stars. And I renamed my shop the new moon. So I'm going to take this and glue it on right here so that it hangs in front of that light. And that should make the light um, whoop, not as bright. And well, if I can get hold of the little sucker, slippery little sucker, wasn't it? Um, so I'll glue it onto this piece right here underneath the new moon sign so it will hang down this way. And that should dim the light some plus force the light downward in front of the door which is what we want 
So that'll be how we'll do our lights. Now, once your lights are all in, I'll show you this, but I'm not going to do it because I'll have more lights. Um, again, the package came with five lights. So you've got three for the bottom and you'll have two that you'll use on the top structure. So once you have all of your lights in and everything has been pulled to the back, what you'll want to do is you'll want to take all of your red wires so you'll have five of them. Whoops, that one I can't get apart there. It's, what's the say? So you take all your red wires and then you will connect them to this red lead off of your battery um, strap. So you'll connect those all together. Um, the, you, the little pieces that are shrink tubes in there, the little rubber pieces, before you connect these, you'll slide that down onto you, one onto your red, one onto your black. And so then when you connect all these together, like that, this black one out of the way, uh, once they're all connected together, you pull that shrink tube up the cover where you've twisted the wires together. And that's all you do is you just twist them. Make sure you twist them really well. I mean, they're really tight. And then once you twist them, kind of tug to make sure that they, it doesn't come loose. And then you'll use like a heat gun or a lighter or something like that. And you just want to heat that black tube and it'll start shrinking and it'll shrink down really tight and secure your connection. And then you, of course, will find a way to hide the battery pack later on. So it's really, really easy to do these. Um, what I like about them, I don't know. With my other miniatures, they do have a nine volt adapt or a three volt adapter. I believe it is three volts that you plug into the wall. And I normally will use those, except then that means you have to find a place to put your miniature that's near a plug. And um, since we have an older home, we don't have a lot of plugs. So um, I decided to try this nine volt and see how long the battery lasts. You can also get these with the little round, like watch battery things, and they don't last any time at all. So they're kind of a waste, I think. Um, unless you want to just turn it on, leave it on for 30 minutes and turn it back off every now and then. You might get a month's worth of use out of it. So I'm, I'm really curious to see how long this is going to last. Once I hook mine all up, I'm going to uh, turn it on and leave it on and see. I may go ahead and connect this to this temporarily without the shrink tube and turn it on and leave it on and see how long the battery lasts. I suspect that this nine volt's gonna last a whole lot longer than the little round ones. So, and and it's less expensive. Like I said, you've got $9.99 plus your battery, whatever the cost, and I buy these Amazon Basics batteries. I think they're just as good as any others. But if you use the uh, plug-in, that plug-in alone is like $13 now. So, um, I was trying to kind of get away from that and get away from having all these plugs. A good thing about these LEDs are they don't get warm, so you could literally turn it on and just leave it on. You never have to worry about it. Um, so I really, really like them. And they have lights for all kinds of stuff. They've got flashing lights, red lights, blue lights, all kinds. Also, um, I don't know if I talked about it on my clock tower, my steampunk clock tower, but I have blue lights in the um, part where the clock is. And all I did was I used these lights and I colored the end of the light with alcohol ink. So you literally can get a white, plain white light and you can color it any color you want uh, with just by just dabbing alcohol ink on it. So um, that's another good thing to know. So that's it, and we're done until we get to the second part, which will be May 1st. Um, I am having surgery, and I'll be out for probably a week, maybe two. I just don't know yet. just depends on how quick I heal. Um, so I'm going to try to go ahead and get the second part done way before then. But in any case, the, um, the video and posts will both go live on May 1st for the second part. And let me know, leave a comment below. I did this one in a bunch of different 
parts. I think this is the, yeah, this is the fourth part. So um, let me know, and I try to keep them shorter, like 30, 35, 40 minutes videos. So let me know if you like things put in parts like that, or for the next one, if you would prefer to see just one long video that might be like an hour, hour and a half, um, or maybe two parts instead of four. So um, let me know, leave a comment below how you prefer that, and I'll kind of watch for the comments and see how you guys, what, what way you like best. So that's it. Thanks for stopping by and thank you if you're participating. I hope you've enjoyed the project. I thought it was, I loved it. I thought the, um, there was a lot of value in it. You get a lot of stuff. I didn't even use all of the stuff and you can see my windows are just like packed. I did go onto Etsy and order um, some cauldrons that stack and I'll have a link for that when this video is posted. And I think I'm gonna stack them up right here on the corner. So um, that was the only thing outside of the kit as far as things that are included inside that I did. But um, so I guess that's it guys. And I will see you on May 1st. Have a great day. Be kind to somebody and take care.